What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and I'm hoping that this game is sort of starting to like pick up the crayons and draw towards a conclusion. I'm not really too sure on it though exactly how this is going to go. In the previous episodes as a bit of a recap, we had taken Priscilla around so that she could see medieval tines and then we had also taken her to the carnival. That was sort of an accident but it worked out in the end. We ultimately got the stuff done that we needed to get done and so now we're heading back with a backpack full of goodies from the medieval times if you don't know what medieval times is or medieval times medieval times is like this thing that we have in the united states there's like eight or nine of them where you can go and watch jousting and have like a medieval dinner like in character if you want to you can wear costumes and it's kind of it's it's expensive but it's really really awesome at the same time so you should definitely check it out if you ever get the chance to give it a go i highly recommend it it was a lot of fun people walk around now apparently this is not a bug this is actually like people walk around and they go to the jobs that you've given them so the people that have guard duty will walk around the fence the people that work in the farm will be upstairs at the farm I had no idea that that was a new addition to the game but I guess it is at this point so there you go the last couple episodes we were wondering like wondering what the hell was going on that explains it the thing is every single time you get up in here what happened to Vic again I'm not recalling what happened to Vic something I remember he needed the day off for something I just can't recall what it was can we talk to him right here if we talk to him he stands up oh no he lays back down Awesome! Let's go back over here. Let me see if I can investigate from the whiteboard then. If I don't know what Vic did yesterday. Victor! What are you doing, uh, Victor? Victor. Vic Castillo is unavailable for 20 hours. Okay, well, seeing as we've dropped off a bunch of stuff, although I think the majority of what we were carrying around was... I think the majority of what we were carrying around was weapons, so we may still need to unload our inventories a little bit, but yeah, we're carrying around... A lot of stuff, so let's take that, we'll transfer that on over, let's get all of this nice and alleviated, okay, he's still got that right there, we got Priscilla right here who's rocking some stuff, not stuff that I really want, but still stuff, I guess in the most expansive sense of the word, oh look, they made the bullet stack even higher for 9mm, I guess the game must have patched in the last day or two, that's the only way that I would know how to explain it, with Polly. Polly, what you got for me? You got yourself a med kit and some landmines. So a little bit of like first do harm and then a little bit of first do no harm. Kind of like combining both sides of the equation, I guess. Troy Cooper is still with us and he has the intimacy problems. We also have Snowblind. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any point bringing that along. So we'll drop those in right now. Let's grab the fishing rods up out of here. And if we've got the fishing rods, I think we should probably go out and see if we can get, like, some basic tasks done all around the map. Over the course of the next couple days, it has been my plan. I'm going to start bypassing time very, very quickly in this game because I'm pretty much done with the scavenging game. Like, I'm a little bit bored by it. Like, I can only repetitively scavenge locations with no storyline, like, over and over and over again so many times. There are a few things that I want to get done. I do want to take care of the militia out at the militia HQ, but we got to wait for Vic to be better in order for that to work. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that trend. Still, we can get it done. It's just going to take a little bit of finagling let's go to the orchard we'll grab some of these apples and then we'll go fishing for a little while maybe grab oh, those are just larvae never mind i don't want any larvae right now not going to be helpful to bring home bugs i'd be like i said you have to do one job and you brought back bugs i guess that's fine we got to feed the alligator lizards i mean we got to feed our pets but i don't know if i want to eat mealworms for dinner it seems a little brutal four hours sure big in and we're right at twilight too we're at the dusk and so that's a pretty good time to fish I, normally it's like dusk and dawn or when I go fishing. I don't think I've gone fishing too many times at dusk though. Frequently at dawn though. Most of the times that I've gone out it's been at dawn. What do we have going on right here? Oh, it's finished? We only got nine and... Wait, what? Hold on, go right there. I've actually never played around with fishing too much in the game, so I'm not sure what the average take would be. It looks like it's equal to the amount of rods you have. Oh, maybe not. We got ten that time. I don't think that would be enough food to actually keep people squared away. The neighborhood, it sounds like someone is near. Eh, I'm okay bypassing those things. I'm not really too concerned about all the random events that pop in. Typically, all it is is an ambush. Like, you spend your time and you go in there and then you get attacked by some dudes. And that's typically the way that it goes. That's just the way that she goes. Let's go upstairs to quote Ray very, very liberally. Let's go upstairs. We'll crash out for the night, although this is a little bit early for my bedtime. I go to bed at like 2 every day. It's because I'm working on stuff for the channel. Typically, I have like my quiet time after all the lights go out and everybody in my house is asleep. Or I sit and I edit for a little while. Let's go to bed. Yep. We got ourselves 
What was our, our fresh food game was 163. Good. And so the morale total is up by 120. We haven't had to worry about giving anybody any specialized stuff either because morale has been almost universally high the entire time. So that's pretty cool. Just means you got to keep the weed supply away from it. Sorry to bother you, Tweedle Time, but there's a small problem. Jillian slipped out sometime either early this morning or very late last night. Probably just went up and over the fence without waking anybody up. Now, I have good reason to believe she's coming back. She left a scrawled note saying supplies back soon on my office floor, but that was it. No one else saw or heard her leave, and there was no information on the note. Did she take anything? I checked our stocks, and it doesn't seem like it. Some of the things she brought along with her are gone, but she likely took them with her to help with the scavenging. All right, good to know. Once she's back, I need to talk to her. Absolutely. Also, you know, I think Jillian may have at least a slight case of Asperger's syndrome. From her behavior, I don't think she'll really understand why her going out alone would be such a large cause for alarm. That might be a good thing to consider when talking to her. Great. Hey, I know a lot of people around here wanted to blame me for stealing those antibiotics, and I know you could have kept the mob happy by pinning it on me. I just want to say I appreciate your trust. It means a lot, and if I can repay you, just let me know what I need to do. Sure thing, Ephraim. I knew you didn't do it. I didn't know if coming here was a good idea, but now I know it was the right decision. Let me know if anybody gives you a hard time and we can talk later. There you are. I'd like to discuss the matter of the food taken from my house. I understand that sometimes you use this as an incentive to motivate people here. I think it's only fair that if you're going to use it for political favor, I'd be allowed to distribute my food fairly to people who I think are doing the best job at keeping this place safe. I'd like about 20 rations of my food back. Well... I'll give you 10, but that's because if people think you're hoarding food, they'll ask me to throw you out. Mm, I'm not entirely satisfied by this, but since you have more experience with these people, I'll assume you're telling the truth. 10 it is. Keep this between us, and we'll talk later. Let me get a word with you. Look, it's obvious. Ain't no one here can match me when it comes to survival skills. I'm pretty important. I know you know that. I'm a big man, and all that surviving builds up an appetite, so I think it's only fair that I get a little extra on account of all I do. Let's make it 10 rations worth of food. Let's see here. Let's go with the leadership one. Fine, but I'll have to start charging you a fee for staying here. Say one of your rashes per day? That's okay. Forget I said anything. Troy's easy. Troy's super easy. It's, he's actually like one of those guys where if you puff out your chest a little bit, he'll probably walk away. He ain't gonna do nothing. He's mostly, he's mostly harmless. So Vic is still out, unfortunately. That gives us... Ah, I thought he'd be back in by right now. I kind of want to swap out Priscilla. How long do we have on Victor? Let's see, we've got Vic, where you at? Looking for the letter V, I know what the letter V looks like, he's got no job. Okay, so he's no longer down on the ground, let's take Priscilla and we'll reassign her elsewhere. We could probably put her on just about anything, it doesn't really matter, people are doing their thing right now. we got a sniper rifle going right there. Did we repair the refrigerator? I'm hoping that we did. Let's, let's repair some HP on the fence as well, because we did finally get hit a little bit ago. And while the fence has held up remarkably well over the course of our entire playthrough, it looks like it's actually starting to take a little bit of damage. So with Vic Castillo in play, we need to re-equip him. I don't know if I dropped off all of his equipment or not, or if I gave Priscilla just, like, extra stuff. If I just gave her extra stuff, I'm not going to worry about unequipping her for right now. But, Victor, I just want to make sure that he has all the things that he needs in order to be efficient in combat. So he's got enough rounds to last for a little while. I still really like the sniper rifle, and I do think it's a great weapon, so I'm going to hold on to that. I think we need to get ourselves an EpiPen up in here somewhere, though, for him. And I have no idea where it is on the item list. Like, it's got to be in here somewhere. I'm sort of just, like, blurring my eyes right now and just going. But it never seems to show up in any of the regions where it's supposed to. It's the weird thing about it. The EpiPen, it doesn't show up in the uniques. It doesn't show up in any tab except for all. I don't know if they just, like, forgot to give it a classification when they first got the item or what they did, but... It don't show up. I still would love a little search bar right here, or maybe one you can click over on this side to keep up the motif of the UI. Where you could just search EpiPen or something like that if you really, really needed it. But unfortunately, stuck panning around as usual looking for this damn thing. Every single time I need EpiPens, there they are. Every single time. Let's split off like three of these right here. They do take up a little bit of weight, but I want people to have distributed EpiPens just in case things go wrong in the middle of combat. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. You all know how it goes. On this side, we got a riot shield, which might not be a terrible idea for Tweedle time if we're going to be going after... Then again, he needs his spear in order to deal damage. It's a little bit worrying. I suppose that'll work for right now. 
I could keep the spear in the inventory just in case we needed to swap out. That might work. So we could go to right there. Vix got himself the sniper rifle. We could give him the combat shotgun. If we're going after heavily armored people, it might be a decent opportunity. Yeah. How many shells do I have, though? Let me go back to weapons here. Got the laser sighted MS, but we don't have the ammo in order to use that properly. I always feel like if I use the MS too much, it's going to cause, like, a big, big depletion in our ammo supply. We've only got 15 shells on this side, though. See, that's the problem, is that I thought we had more shells than that. Although, how many is Paul carrying around? Oh, he's only got 36, so yeah, we need to restock him up, too. Interesting. Well, we may be out of supply sooner than I thought. I think we went through a lot of shells trying to clear out the Austin place. And that's what cost us. Okay, never mind. Vic's going to have to stick with it for right now with the upgraded sniper rifle. He doesn't really have much of an option. And there we go. I got a fish out of every single time my mouse stops working. I have to look up inside of it, and there's usually a cat hair that's all rolled up inside of the optical, I guess is what you would call it. Anyways, it's a minor annoyance, and it's the reason why I took a little break right there. Just throw them all in there. We have nobody else using those guns, so I see no reason to leave it all just sort of like hanging right now. Not going to let it hang. That's the reason why I can't go back to the library. All right, so we've got all this stuff. We've got bullet vests. Everything's looking pretty good right now. What was Paul rocking? Paul's got himself the auto shoddy. Okay. As far as weapons go, jars of acid might be a good call. What chemical resist does this give? 0%. So yeah, the jars of acid might be a decent plan. Tear gas might not be a terrible plan. So let's grab some jars of acid. We got to go in like full bore if we're going to try and take these guys out. Even then, I don't know that it's going to work the way that we want it to. Let me refill his supplies right there. Bring some more with him just in case we need it. On this side, we'll go in on tear gas from right there. That does piercing, don't it? Yeah, it does. I was going to use the molotovs, but I don't think they're going to be that helpful on this excursion. Got some more tear gas right there, so bring tear gas with you. If we can knock people out or take care of business, we got some nerve gas right there. That was the one that I was really, really hoping we'd get to use. So where is Troy at? Troy. Let's get you a little bit of the old nerve gas. All right. And so now I think we should be in position to go after the place. And I don't know if it's going to go down like that. This might go really, really badly. I, we're stocked up. But we're not stocked up that well. We would have to use a lot of supplementary supplies. I would put on gas masks, but we'll lose a lot of ballistic resistance. And it's not as bad as it would be, I guess, if we got knocked out in the middle of a shootout. But still. Let's head back. What is this? The hiking path. You hear moaning. Well, I've been hiking and heard moaning from the bushes before, and it's never pleasant. So I don't think I'm going to go in after that. Mostly you just end up walking in on somebody. That's... Almost all that it is, every single time. It's just weird and awkward, and you're just like, well then, people getting their biological functions done out in public. They are out here trying to function. Okay, so because we're in this location, I'm going to try and make sure my stuff likes to save, so... Wait, was this the right place? Yeah, this is the right place. So if we come back in here, what did they have the last time that we came through? They've got corrugated steel shields... He's got what looks like a railroad spike. What options do I have over here? You here to see Jefferson. See, I don't like the way this is playing out. Because what's going to occur right here is they're going to invite me into the center of the lion's den where I would rather just attack this place from the front. That's how I personally would deal with it. I wouldn't even mess around with, you know, letting them draw me in. And then I'm inside the building. But I'm a little bit worried that if I open fire first, I'm going to get in trouble and it's going to take a morale hit. I would have to look it up and see how that goes, but inside the building was definitely not an option. Like Inside the building, we found that we had a lot of people surrounding us last time, and I felt very, very outgunned. So maybe... Well... 
let's just go for it and we'll see what happens here. Alright, when I heard somebody was at the door, I didn't think they'd be bringing our friend Troy back. Hey, Jefferson, listen, I know I said some things and maybe did some things. Shh, it's okay, Troy. How you feeling? They taking care of you? Uh, yeah, I guess things is pretty good. You know, not like it was here, but... Oh, I'm glad to see you. Did we already do this? I think we already did this. I'm pretty sure we already did this. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I already did this conversation. So if you guys are mad about it, I, I'm i pretty sure we already did this. Like, we had to come back. I And so what basically happened is there's bad blood between Troy and Jefferson because Troy set up one of his guys to get killed, who he, spent, who he sent time, like, training and all that kind of stuff. And so now he's demanding that we give him back to him. He's one of us, and he's not coming along. About the woman in the cage. The woman tries to talk despite a gag in her mouth that Jefferson puts a finger to his lips. She's a terrorist, an agent of the government that created this plague. Muslim bitch. Until she tells us how to cure the disease, she's going to be staying right here. Hand her over. Oh, ho, hold up, Fillmore. I know our guests were going to be stupid enough to give a demand that I give them what's mine in my own damn country, right? You fucking heard me. Go ahead, Fillmore. Finally. Okay, so on this side, I probably should have set these actives a little sooner. So right here, let's get moving. So there's 44 points of damage right there. And then there's 86 right there, so he should be going down pretty soon. We got no ammo on that side, so we'll reload him, unfortunately. There we go, so we'll get that going. And then what I'm going to do right here is we'll draw him back to this side. Out goes the tear gas. Unfortunately, it didn't affect his own guys either. Zero points of damage done right there. We may have to deal with this. We got guys coming in through the back, so I have no idea how this whole thing's going to go. Obviously, I think we have a little bit of time to play with, but not very much. He's still 100%. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, one thing at a time. 29 points of damage done. Okay, so we got one enemy down already. We're going to have a couple people coming in to deal with us in just a moment. We had to split the stacks right there. I'm going to send him in after Jefferson. I don't know if it's going to work out so great. He's a little bit low on AP, though, so he's not going to make the run. we got a spear coming in from the backside since that's a piercing weapon. That's more than likely going to be the first thing we need to hit up. We are going to have people flooding in from the front door as well, so we need to be careful about that. A little bit of damage out right there, but it was all absorbed, so I should be... I'm pretty happy with that resolution. I'm okay with it. Zero points of damage right there. Okay, so on this side, it is time to get this dude taken care of. So 59 points of damage away. 65 points. We got 115 off right there. Looking really, really good for us right now. Let's step Y. Just keep ourselves split up in case they decide to huck a grenade in. Not something that I'm looking forward to dealing with. Shot away right there. And then I'm going to start spreading out a tad more. We've got the accuracy to deal with the enemy from a range, so I'm not concerned about it. I don't know what they're going to try next over on this side, but I'd be willing to bet it's probably not going to be pleasant. So damage done right there, unfortunately. We need to get started on Jefferson, I guess. So there's 54. He's now down. And there's 55. And so 99 out. We just couldn't cross the threshold over into the triple digits. We're still in the doubles. We're unfortunately still in the double digits. It's okay. I like double digits. My cats have double digits. They're little diggies on the front of them. Can I hurt him right now? Oh, don't shield bash him, you idiot. What are you doing right now? I think he's probably going to absorb most of that, but it's a little bit of damage, I guess. We got a dog and some other guys coming in. I don't know what that was right there. The Militia Chemist. Okay, that's a little bit odd. I'm not sure what we took right there, but it's unpleasant. He's going to miss with a couple of shots. We need to take out the Chemist on this turn right now, so let's get him. He's now down 68 damage done. He's got no ammo remaining, so we'll reload him on the back end right there. That leaves him with 1 AP. And it's going to put us with... There we go. So the Militia Chemist is down. I'm going to move him away real fast so that he's not at point-blank range anymore. We're going to have an arrow out against Paul, by my estimation, for 6 damage. Unfortunately, that means that I'm going to have to figure out an extraction plan here. Let's get Jefferson, since he's capable of dealing damage. This guy right here might be able to resist a lot of our pain. 
and then we'll spread out a little bit better. All right, so Tweedle time. I need you over here. I don't know if he can heal with three, but I need Paul to feel better, so there it is. I'm going to get in the way for right now. They're going to have a couple turns which are going to go out right here, but it's not going to matter. Unless this guy crits, we should be in okay shape. Pick whichever shape you want. Circles, squares, triangles perhaps. A very, very festive paral parallelogram. I don't know, whichever you prefer. We're doing a lot of damage right now, even for being blinded. Oh, and you're down. Okay, and so there's another enemy taken out. I don't know if the ones from the gatehouse are going to be out here anytime soon. But let's step back just a little bit. I'm going to try and put this dog down because it has been a very, very bad dog. 266 points of damage out right there. One of those fights that's very, very risky. And on this side, we need this gate guard to go away next. And so now he's out of ammo. We did 20 points of damage right there. I just wanted Paul to be far enough away to where when this guy gets up, because he will in just a moment, we don't have too much to worry about. Whose turn is it right now? Oh, we got people coming in through the back door too. Okay. Well, if I can get Tweedle time to square away Paul's wounds, we should be okay. I don't think we'll have much to worry about. So with three remaining, that's all that I got left. What's that going to cost me? Can you get that done? I don't think it matters. Let's just hang for a second. This should be one of the last packs of really well-armed men on the map. And so I think if we can get them the hell on out of the way, we'll be in much better shape. He's going to try and go around. Is he going to get a shot off? Good. I don't need him to get a shot off right now. Paul's on fire, so he needs to practice his stop, drop, and roll. Or run around screaming and just making the flames worse. Whichever he feels like will make the whole thing go away. But there it is. So a few more enemies down. On this side, what can you do for me? You got a shot right there? You don't. Okay. Well, I'm going to have you set up right there then. I don't know what gun that is. Looks like maybe... Oh, it's a double barrel. Never mind. I'm not concerned about that. we got a bunch of guys outside. Some of them are going to be a bigger concern than others. But for right now, I'm going to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in future episodes. Take care out there, everybody. And as always, hi-do from me to you.